I've given my class uh, a problem here. The question is, if they are given the three vertexes of a triangle, so let's say this triangle, this vertex, this vertex, and this vertex. Given those three vertexes, then by connecting the vertexes with lines, they form a triangle. They should be able to tell me what the length of the sides, the three sides of the triangle here. Here I've I have them written in lowercase, lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c. Uh, they should be able to tell me what the lengths of those sides are, and they also should be able to tell me how big these angles are. I have angle A, angle B, and angle C. Now I've represented the angles by uppercase, the length of the sides by lowercase. Now notice that uh, we always have the angle labeled A opposite the side labeled A, the angle labeled C opposite the side labeled C, and the angle labeled B opposite the side labeled B like that. So the question is, if I give you the coordinates of three vertices of a triangle, can you tell me the length of all three sides and the angles? Now, as in most problems, um, especially most problems that we might be writing a computer program to solve, and I want to see if you can solve this um, in Excel, for example, or MATLAB, um, then uh, uh, there are multiple ways of doing this. Now, one approach of doing this is to use the law of sines and the law of cosines. Um, now, uh, before I jump in and tell you that, I first want to explain just a little bit how we measure angles. Now, here we're going to be taking all these angles as being positive angles. We always refer to the angles in a triangle unless we're in very unusual circumstances. We talk about the angles as being positive angles, not negative angles. So for example, this angle A might be 30 degrees. Uh, we don't talk about the angle A being negative 30 degrees. Um, now, sines and cosines. Uh, if you have had trig and pre or pre-calc or some variation on that subject, even in geometry, you may have discussed what the laws of sines and cosines are. Now let me just go even further back and tell you what the definition is for a sine and cosine. Now right here, I have this angle, this angle that's in there, uh, call that angle theta 1. So that's this angle. Inside, uh, and theta 1, we measure that angle theta 1 is the angle measured from the x-axis, which is this axis right here, up to the line. And that's how we measure a positive theta 1. If we measure the angle uh, in a clockwise direction, such as theta 3 here, theta 3 is measured as a negative angle. Now, the cosine of the angle, if this side, if this length right here, this distance from here to here, if that length is 1, then the cosine of the angle of theta 1 is just the length of the projection of this projection right in here. This projection is the cosine. So if the length of the hypotenuse on this right triangle is 1, then the x projection is the cosine, the y projection is the sine. Now, notice that if we look at angle theta 3 right here, that the x projection of this angle is the same as the, uh, so if this is uh, exactly the same size, but in the opposite direction from theta 1, we have that the x projection of theta 3, in other words, the cosine of theta 3 equals the cosine of theta 1. So here's what we have then. Cosine of theta 1 equals the cosine of theta 3. But because we're measuring the angle in the clockwise direction, the theta 3 is measured as a negative angle. So we call it cosine of negative theta 1. So um, when doing cosines, 
the cosine of theta 1 equals cosine of negative theta 1, and that's always true for cosines. Cosine of x equals cosine of negative x. Something similar happens with measuring sines. Um, that note the sine is the length of this distance right here if the hypotenuse is 1. So what we have is that this sign here, this sign and this sign are negatives. So we have the sine of theta 1, which is this, is equal to negative the sine of theta 3. So sine of theta 1 is equal to negative the sine of theta 3. That's because this goes, this distance is along the negative y-axis. This distance is along the positive y-axis. And so we're saying that the sine, which is equal to theta 3, is negative sine of negative theta 1. So we have these two properties that uh, with sines and cosines. Remember that the sine is odd. In other words, the sine of negative x is equal to negative the sine of x. That's this. And we have that the cosine of negative x is equal to the cosine of sine of x. So that's one property of sines and cosines that we have to remember. Negative of the sine uh, is the sine of the negative angle. So the sine is called an odd function because of that. The cosine is called an even function. So if we actually graph the sine and cosine, we graph the cosine, so I plot x here and cosine of x up here, the cosine looks like this. So we go a certain distance over x, we go in the opposite direction, and the value of the cosine is the same. That's what we mean for an even function. We have symmetry right across the y-axis here. Everything across here is symmetrical. But the, but the sine function, sine function looks an awful lot like the cosine, but it looks like this, where we have a negative symmetry across the x-axis. So as we go across here, so let's say I go across here, then I have that uh, this distance here is the same as this distance, but it's in the negative direction. So th this is why. This is for an odd function. This is for an even function. So I hope you remember something like that from when you took uh, geometry or uh, trigonometry or pre-calculus. Okay, now, so I know uh, some of these properties of sines and cosines. So I need to keep in mind then that cosine of x equals cosine of negative x, and I need to keep in mind that negative sine of x equals negative sine of x. And there are a few other properties that come in handy that uh, when these properties are that if I do the sine of the sum of two angles, sine of x plus y equals sine x um, cosine y uh, plus cosine x sine y. And I have that the cosine of x plus y equals cos cosine x cosine y minus sine x sine y. So these are the sine of the sum and the cosine of the sum of angles formula. Now if we remember these formulas here, we can derive pretty much everything we need to know about sines and cosines. So for example, if x equaled y, right in here, suppose x equals y, then this becomes cosine of 2x 
this becomes cosine of x times cosine of x minus sine of x times sine, sine of x. Because if x equals y, sine y equals sine x, and cosine y equals cosine x. So let me fix this right here. This should be cosine x there, like that. Or so I can say the cosine of 2x then is equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared x. So I can derive a lot of different formulas with sines and cosines, uh, knowing if I know the even odd property up here, this, this, and I know what the sine of the sum of two angles is here and the cosine of the sum of two angles there, I can derive a lot of different formulas relating to sines and cosines. So I'm saying definitely remember these things. Okay, now I'm going to come back to the, this problem here. And I'm saying what it is if we, now think about this. If we have a triangle and we know the length of the three sides of the triangle, then we really know everything there is to know about a triangle. Okay? But knowing the three angles doesn't give us everything we need to know. Now let's investigate that a bit. So suppose I put in a triangle. Here's a triangle. Okay? This happens to be an equilateral triangle. If I know all three angles in this triangle are equal. They're all equal to 60 degrees. Because remember, the sum of the angles in a triangle always add to 180. Now, if I, keep, I can keep the same angles and change the size of that triangle. The angles are all each 60 degrees, but it's not the same triangle. They all have different, the, it all has, all the sides are different in length. Now, they're different in the same way, but it's not the same triangle. Uh, so knowing three sides tells you everything you need to know about your triangle. Knowing three angles doesn't tell you everything you want to know. So keep that in mind. Let me close that. So my problem here that I'm going to have to solve in Excel is to how can I determine the angles once I determine the lengths of all the sides. So right now, I'm going to teach you how we can, knowing the coordinates of the vertices, how we can compute the lengths of the sides. So let's say I have the coordinates. Let's suppose this vertex right here is, um, if I put it on an axis, let me do that. Let me put it on an axis. Um, now let me, let me give a, a more general problem. So let me come back down here. Okay, I'm going to give you a more general problem. Okay, let me draw another triangle. Insert shape, triangle. There. There's a tr more general triangle. Let me draw X and Y axis. So here's my X axis. It's going to go right here. And here's my Y axis. Now let me make this easy for myself. Let me uh, try to put the vertices of this triangle right on intersection points like that. Okay. So this is the triangle I'm going to use. So we look, what are the coordinates of this point right here? So we go over 2 and up 3. So this is 2 comma 3. What are the coordinates of this point right here? We go over 3. And we go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 3, 11. 3, comma 11. Let me rewrite that here. This is 3, comma 11. Now we put the coordinates for this point right in here. So we go out how far? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, we go up 13, and then we, from here we go up uh, uh, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, thirteen, comma seven are the coordinates of that point. So here we have the coordinates of the three vertices of that triangle. Okay, so the next video I'm going to show you how we can use those coordinates to compute the length of the three sides.